The fantasy land of L. Frank Baum's Oz has fascinated young and old alike for decades. Now author Michelle Rubitino explores one of the most enduring mysteries. Where exactly is Oz? Baum claimed he discovered rather than created Oz. But can this world possibly exist outside the imagination? Gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for this treasured work of literature as you delve into the mysteries behind the origin of the wonderful wonderful Wizard of Oz. The maps of mystery are found in Baum's Tick Tock of Oz book. This is a real life national treasure hunt for those willing to seek. The movie The Wizard of Oz is held in the Library of Congress of the United States of America. The mystery is in the flipped compass. Behind me is the map that Baum created showing the Munchkin land in the west. But in the text of the story, it is clearly in the East. To give us a little more background, we're going to go to our role-playing fifth grader, Olivia Spieler. Olivia? Hi, my name is Olivia Spieler, and the USA was founded on the principles derived from the Freemasons in 1776. Their Bible was the King James Version circa 1600. Manifest Destiny was the territorial expansion of the United States from 1812 to 1860. Manifest Destiny incorporated the belief that the United States was destined, even divinely ordained, to expand across the North American continent from the Atlantic seaboard to the Pacific Ocean. In 1900, the USA was labeled the New World. It was 124 years old. Israel was not a nation on the world map. People were immigrating to California and Alaska, prospecting for gold. Countless books have been written connecting Baum's story to the picture of the United States, circa 1900. But to date, no one has revealed the source of the mystery maps until now. Some of my youthful readers are developing wonderful imaginations. This pleases me. Imagination has brought mankind through the dark ages to its present state of civilization. Imagination led Columbus to discover America. Imagination led Franklin to discover electricity. Imagination has given us the steam engine, the telephone, the talking machine, and the automobile. For these things had to be dreamed of before they became realities. So I believe that dreams, daydreams, you know, with your eyes wide open and your brain machinery whizzing, are likely to lead to the betterment of the world. The imaginative child will become the imaginative man or woman most apt to create, to invent, and therefore to foster civilization. A prominent educator tells me that fairy tales are of untold value in developing imagination in the young. I believe it. When I was young, I longed to write a great novel that should win me fame. Now that I'm getting old, my first book is written to amuse children. For aside from my evident inability to do anything great, I have learned to regard fame as a will-o'-the-wisp, which when caught is not worth the position. But to please a child is a sweet and lovely thing that warms one's heart and brings its own reward. Since it was published in 1900, 
no book has matched the popularity or been as controversial as the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Mr. L. Frank Baum's last delicious bit of nonsense is amusing to the little people, and even more so to their elders. It is no small gift to write a juvenile, which is not inane, and this gift Mr. Baum possesses to a degree which is almost a monopoly. The genius of this American author, Frank Baum, had a flow of imagination, a depth of humor, a sense of character, and a narrative control rare in the writers of fantasy. There is a persistent mystery to be solved on the end papers in Baum's book titled Tick Tock of Oz. Opening the cover to the front end paper, you see an illustration titled Map of the Marvelous Land of Oz, drawn by Professor Wogglebug, T.E. The compass rose in the corner shows an accurate compass. The first part of the mystery appears on the back end paper, which shows the first map in the center but with a larger view of the land of Oz. In the corner, the compass is flipped. East is where west should be. The second part of the mystery appears in the locations of the Winky Country and the Munchkin Country. Within the text of the story, Dorothy first lands in Munchkin Country and kills the Wicked Witch of the East. Yet this map reflects a location in the west. Reading through various fan websites and researching what could be read about Frank Baum as a person, it is the opinion of the International Wizard of Oz Club that the incorrect compass should be corrected, thereby losing clues to the original origin. This theory of origin comes about after reading Baum stated that he discovered the Oz story, not invented it. After applying a search engine and my drafting skills to a King James Version Bible, the description of Eden is as follows. A fountain of water springs up from the earth and parts into four heads. In the east is Assyria, with the river head, Hittichel. In the south is Ethiopia, river head, Gihon. In the west, Havilah, and river head, Pison. In the north, no land name, and the river Euphrates. In the Bible story, the east has the tree of knowledge in the midst or center. In the center of the whole garden is the tree of life. The star shows where Adam was placed in the garden. This diagram repeats throughout the symbolism written through the story of Israel. Four heads, man, ox, lion, and eagle matching also the four Gospels, in that Jesus is depicted in Matthew as the lion head, in Luke the man head, in Mark the ox head, and in John the eagle head. The description states the rivers flow back into the center, forming this animated imagery. 
No such place exists as this on earth, but it does fit the description of the human heart. In the book of Revelation is the imagery derived for heaven. Genesis tells us that the firmament is heaven. It is a square box shape and also has the tree of life in the midst, or center. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there is the tree of life, and no more sea. The walls are made of gemstones, causing a rainbow effect. The final piece was inserting the imagery found in Ezekiel of the four faces, which are also the same symbols as the four heads in Eden. In Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10, we see four living creatures, known as cherubim, with four faces, man, ox, lion, and eagle. This is a match to the imagery we see Baum exhibit as the terrible Oz. In the book, each character goes in to see Oz alone, and each one sees a different creature. But what interested Dorothy most was the big throne of green marble that stood in the middle of the room. It was shaped like a chair and sparkled with gems, as did everything else. In the center of the chair was an enormous head, without a body to support it or any arms or legs, whatever. There was no hair upon its head, but it had eyes and a nose and a mouth and was much bigger than the head of the biggest giant. So the scarecrow followed him and was admitted into the great throne room where he saw, sitting in the emerald throne, a most lovely lady. She was dressed in green silk gauze and wore upon her flowing green locks a crown of jewels. Growing from her shoulders were wings, gorgeous in color and so light that they fluttered if the slightest breath of air reached them. But when the woodman entered the great throne room, he saw neither the head nor the lady, for Oz had taken the shape of a most terrible beast. It was nearly as big as an elephant, and the green throne seemed hardly strong enough to hold its weight. The beast had a head like that of a rhinoceros, only there were five eyes in its face. There were five long arms growing out of its body. It also had five long, slim legs. Thick, woolly hair covered every part of it, and a more dreadful-looking monster could not be imagined. It was fortunate the tin woodman had no heart at that moment, for it would have beat loud and fast from terror. The lion at once passed through the door and glancing around saw, to his surprise, that before the throne was a ball of fire, so fierce and glowing he could scarcely bear to gaze upon it. His first thought was that Oz had by accident caught on fire and was burning up. But when he tried to go nearer, the heat was so intense that it singed his whiskers, and he crept back tremblingly to a spot nearer the door. Using the law of reflection applied to the blueprints, each character is reporting back to Dorothy, center spirit, what it saw, independently of each other, thereby showing the cherubim do not spin. They stay fixed to their respective quadrant. So there would be a cherub, or terrible Oz, appearing to each emblem, or face, independently, just as Baum illustrates in that scene. Historians report that Baum dwelled in the harshness of the Dakota Territory 
and it is often speculated that this is where he gets his imagery for Kansas. This indeed may be true. However, when looking at the map of the United States in 1899, California was included, and Hollywood did exist. This shows that he chose Kansas due to the center location on the map in relation to the rest of the country. He also depicts the wizard as being from Omaha, which would be north of the center. He also describes the Eden portion of the diagram as black and white, or very gray. Tracing back to the Eden diagram, the Northwest River is Euphrates, which incites some historical facts, predicted and realized. As Olivia states, the USA was founded by the Freemasons, and their Bible was the King James Version. It matters not which religion, but rather in understanding how the imagineering process of the cherubim operate inside the human mind process. The men had thoughts about the literature they read. They had focus of what they wanted to create, a new world and manifest destiny, they declared. Their diagram is the same as presented here in this documentary. Within that literature, they read about things like four angels loosed at the river Euphrates and a prediction this would be understood when travel and knowledge vastly increase. By overlaying the diagram on the map of the USA, we see Seattle, Washington, interestingly known as the Emerald City, which is indeed where travel and knowledge have vastly increased historically with Boeing air travel and knowledge Microsoft. If we go to a closer map of Seattle, we also see the UFO design from Ezekiel built into the landscape of the Seattle Space Needle. At its base is a keyhole image, and if you follow John Street, you see a garden where the landscape is designed as the same as the Oz and Eden diagram. My observation from study did not see the Bible text as religion does, but rather by removing the veil to see the inspiration it gave to mankind to realize their visions through the natural process of their collective imagining mind. As Baum said, imagination led us out of the dark ages. My feelings conclude that in the imagery Baum discovered, Dorothy to be a creature. The Bible model depicts this with four faces, reflecting to four images. He transposed into the characters in the story. Imagine the human head with four faces, four points of view, each with its own experiences, culminating in what we call thought. This means all the characters in Oz are an aspect of Dorothy, that is to say, in the process of thought. Her mind shows the mechanics of thought through success and failures, transposed from the story surrounding the twelve tribes of Israel self-contained from the seed inside the human body. Life is uneasy from a singular side Down in the hole some emotions are hard to hide It's your decision, it's a chance you take It's on your head, it's a habit that's hard to break Do you need a friend? Would you tell me lies? Would you take me in? Are you lonely in the dark? In the dark? In the dark? In the dark? 
You never listen to the voices inside. They fill your ears as you run to a place to hide. You're never sure if the illusion is real. You pinch yourself, but the memories are all you feel. Can you break away from your alibi? Can you make a play? Will you meet me in the dark? 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 In the dark Don't you need me Don't you need me Don't you need me Don't you leave me You take no interest, no opinions too dear. You make the rounds, oh, you try to be so sincere. You guard your hopes and you pocket your dreams. You trade it all to avoid an unpleasant thing. Can you face the fire? When you see me there, can you feel the fire? Will you love me in the dark? 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 In the dark, in the dark, I'll be waiting in the dark. Educators tell me the cost of education is too high. My reply the cost of ignorance cannot be measured. This video was made and brought to you by Michelle Radio.